The Division 2 has had a bumpy few years filled with ups and downs, so in this video I ask the question, should you play it in 2022? Hello, I'm Abrax and welcome to my Should You Play series for early 2022, where I'll be breaking down some of the most popular looter shooters currently available and equipping you with the knowledge you need to decide whether or not this is the game for you. First, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more content. And a big thank you to my supporters over on Patreon, more on how you can support at the end of the video. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is a looter shooter developed by Massive Entertainment, published by Ubisoft, that released on the 12th of March 2019. The Division 2 puts you in the shoes of a Division agent, a sleeper agent only activated when all else has failed trying to save what remains of Washington DC six months after an outbreak of the dollar flu, a genetically engineered virus that has ravaged most of the world. Currently, The Division 2 is available on all major consoles and PC platforms, from Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X, PlayStation 4 and 5 and Stadia, or if you want to play on PC, you can pick up The Division 2 on Uplay or the Epic Store. Let's talk cost and pricing. At launch, The Division 2 did come with a box price of around $49.99, but this game is a few years old now and the price has been lowered to reflect that and is pretty much always on some kind of offer. When it's not reduced, the standard version of the game is currently about $25.99, but if you want to get everything out of this game, you're also going to want the expansion Warlords of New York, which brings a huge amount more to the game. You can get the separate or you can pick up the full game and the expansion for about $49.99 at full price. But like I said, this game is usually heavily reduced. And while I was writing this video, the full game bundled with the expansion is about £15 on Uplay, with the Ultimate Edition, which came with a few more bells and whistles, being about £20.99, which for the amount of content is a really good price. I will also quickly mention the in-game cash shop. This is pretty much all cosmetic, excluding the level 30 boost for people who want to jump straight into the expansion. Here you can buy apparel, skins, the Warlord of New York expansion and season passes, which are for the Warlord's end game seasons. The expansions and the season passes can only be bought with real world cash, but most of the apparel and skins can actually be earned in game using apparel keys and textiles, which you both simply earn by playing through the game. We've talked about platforms and cost, but more importantly, how does the game play? Tom Clancy's The Division 2 is a third-person cover-based looter shooter. Looter shooters being a genre that takes aspects of classic RPG games and shooters, combining shooting mechanics with the loot, gear and leveling progression of more traditional RPG games. While you play The Division 2, you'll use cover, deploy SHD skills like turrets, seeker mines and shields, and use a pretty big range of real-world weapons, spanning from assault rifles, single-shot rifles, SMGs, shotguns, LMGs and pistols. You'll also be able to create unique builds using The Division 2's deep but simple to understand gear system, giving your character six gear slots, the mask, chest, holster, backpack, gloves and knee pads, with you being able to equip gear in each slot that has their own attributes, brands and talents when it comes to the chest and backpack. Plus there is a range of unique items to collect and use in your builds, like unique named pieces of gear and exotic weapons and gear pieces that completely change your playstyle. So we have shooting, looting and tools to create some pretty unique builds, but what can we do with it? Well, The Division 2 does come with a good amount of content for solo and groups, especially if this is your first time playing the game. The main story has you play through short linear missions fighting against different factions, each with their own unit types, strengths and tactics. These missions take place in areas and buildings scattered across a large open world one by one map of Washington DC, which itself has been built as a living world, filled with friendlies, enemies and dynamically spawning activities. So around every corner could be a hostage needing to be rescued, an enemy convoy to take out and steal their supplies, an enemy propaganda system to disable, or a control point that needs to be taken back. There is always something going on in the open world of The Division 2. Now this sounds great and it is a good system, but I feel I must also mention what I think is the downside to The Division 2 having more of an open world philosophy when it comes to its content. When compared to the first game, The Division 1, which had different game modes introduced as DLC, some of the open world content of The Division 2 can start to feel a little samey in comparison, especially when you look at The Division 1, where you'd go from survival to the underground, which all felt very different. 
but there is more to do in The Division 2 than just missions and open world content, especially if you own the Warlords of New York expansion, which comes with its own map of Lower Manhattan and missions. There's the summit that has you ascend inside a skyscraper, fighting through randomly generated floors, with the factions, objectives, and enemy spawn points all being different every time you play through it. Or Kenley College, a puzzle slash time trial area set in a pretty atmospheric college campus, which I have to say is a really nice and I think well-designed area that feels a little bit underused. For the more hardcore players of The Division 2, the game also comes with legendary difficulty missions for up to four players, which can get pretty crazy, and two eight-player raids with unique boss encounters and group puzzle mechanics. You can also play through the entire game on a hardcore mode, where if you die, your entire character and progression are deleted, which is definitely funner to play than it sounds. The Division 2 also has the Dark Zones. These are lawless PvPvE areas of the map, where you can attack landmarks guarded by NPC factions to earn loot, but in the Dark Zone, nothing is yours until you extract it. Other players can go rogue, hunt you down, steal your loot, and extract it for themselves. That's if you don't steal theirs first. Or if you're looking for more of a pure PvP experience, there's Conflict, a 4v4 PvP game mode with its own maps and a few different game types, Domination, Team Deathmatch, or Elimination. If character customization is your thing, in The Division 2 you do create your own character, but the real customization comes from when you're in-game, with a ton of different earnable cosmetics and apparel, weapon skins, gear dyes, and a full transmog system that lets you change any piece of gear's appearance you have equipped. The game is also packed with collectibles and commendations, which is The Division's version of trophies or achievements for the completionists out there plus a plethora of hidden secrets like the hunter puzzles, hidden bosses, and easter eggs. A lot of the content in The Division 2 can be played solo, but of course the game is also designed with groups in mind. And currently, even with the game being a few years old, there are still plenty of players logging in. I've asked around and matchmaking on console still seems to be very much alive, and I've had no issues on PC, but that is probably just speaking towards the end game activities. If you're a newer player playing through the story or leveling from 1 to 30, you probably won't have too much luck matchmaking. But The Division 2 does have a shepherding system, where you can call for help, and any player, no matter what level they are, if they see it and have it enabled, can then join you and help out. The Division 2 Discord is also still very active, and one of the best places to look if you're looking to group for harder content like the raids or legendary missions. So, I suppose an important question to ask is what kind of future does The Division 2 have? Well, currently The Division 2 is set to have a big title update coming later in 2022, bringing a new game mode, new in-game features and reworks of existing systems. And this has been said to be one of the game's biggest updates so far. On top of that, The Division universe is also set to be growing, with a new Netflix movie on the way, new free-to-play game The Division Heartland, a Division mobile game, and more. Which means the future for the franchise is looking pretty strong. But as for the game, The Division 2, in mid-Feb 2021, along with the announcement that we were getting more content, we also received the news that the previous update was supposed to be the last major update, which did leave a few players concerned about what will happen to the game after the new content drops. When it comes to maintenance and fixes, currently The Division 1, the previous game, still has live servers, rotating events, and active maintenance, so I feel pretty confident that The Division 2 will be supported and maintained for a long time to come. Now, the big question. Should you play it? Well, if you want to know what I think, for the price it drops down to and the frequency in which it's reduced, I wouldn't recommend picking it up for full price, because you can guarantee in a week or two it will probably end up reduced. There is currently a lot to do in game, with an expansion that pretty much doubles that if you also pick that up. And later this year, the game is getting a massive update, bringing much more to the game, and no doubt bringing back quite a few players to boost the player count. So, yes, I would recommend playing The Division 2 in 2022, but ultimately, the choice is yours. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, giving it a like will help others find it, and don't forget to subscribe for future content. And as always, a big thank you to my supporters over on Patreon, and if you would like to join them, you can support the channel for as little as £1 a month. You'll find the link for that in the description below. Have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.